Let's talk about how wheat makes you fat. Yes, this food that we've all been told by the U.S. Dietary Guidelines for Americans, the USDA Food Plate, Food Pyramid, by the Academy of Nutrition, Dietetics, and Dietitians, by the American Heart Association, by the American Diabetes Association, they all agree you should cut your fat and eat more healthy whole grains, right? Well, why is that advice awful for both weight and for health? Well, first of all, wheat is rich in carbohydrates, but it's rich in a very specific form of carbohydrate called amylopectin A. And amylopectin A is uniquely susceptible to human digestion. It thereby raises blood sugar to very high levels. So the 35 to 50 or so grams of carbohydrates in a whole wheat bagel raise blood sugar sky high. Now when blood sugar goes high, that alone has destructive effects. But it also obliges an insulin response. So insulin goes high also. And when you consume lots of healthy whole grains, you have repetitive high blood glucoses and thereby repetitive high blood insulin levels. That's the process that leads to insulin resistance. Your body doesn't respond to insulin as well anymore. And that drives higher blood sugars. But that insulin resistance also drives inflammation and the accumulation of visceral fat. Visceral fat's very different than other fat. So a fat in your arm or your backside or your legs is not the same kind of fat. This is fat that typically accumulates in the abdomen as well as around the heart and it's very inflammatory. And so this inflammation drives uh, uh, weight gain and the insulin resistance also drives weight gain, particularly of this horrible visceral fat process. There's a protein in wheat called gliadin. Now, we have to bear in mind that wheat is a grass. What we consume is really the, pro the product of a seed of a grass. That's what grains are. They're seeds of grasses. And humans don't have the digestive enzymes that break down the protein, the amino acid sequences, in seeds of grasses. So gliadin, this protein in wheat, is a part of a class of proteins called prolamins. And that's because they're rich in proline. And we do not have the digestive enzymes that can break down proline-associated amino acid sequences. So the gliadin, unlike, say, a piece of ham or an egg that you break down into single amino acids, the gliadin protein of wheat is not broken down into single amino acids. It's broken down into pieces or peptides, about four or five amino acids long, rich in proline. Well, those four or five amino acid long peptides are able to cross into the human brain and they bind to the opiate receptors. They don't make you high, they drive appetite. They stimulate appetite. So people who consume lots of wheat or grains typically take in 400, 800, even 1500 calories more per day. And that's why you can witness peculiar phenomena in wheat consuming people like having a big bowl of pasta and you're filled to bursting yet you're still hungry. That you're not hungry because you're because uh, you need more calories or, or need more nutrition. You're hungry because you've been exposed to the gliadin derived opioid peptides. That's a potent appetite stimulant. And that's another reason why you get fat when you consume wheat. As I've mentioned, wheat drives inflammation. So the gliadin drives inflammation in the intestines, gliadin drive peptides are very toxic to the intestinal lining, drive inflammation. But there are other components in wheat that also drive and contribute to inflammation, such as wheat germagglutinin. Wheat germagglutinin is completely impervious to human digestion. It goes in here as a bagel or sandwich or pasta or whatever, and it comes out in the toilet intact. But as it passes through the 30-some feet of your gastrointestinal tract, it's highly inflammatory. And a little bit gets into your bloodstream, and there it becomes extremely inflammatory and adds to body-wide inflammation. So that and some other factors in wheat are drive inflammation. When, you have, when you're inflamed, you gain weight because it blocks insulin once again. And it changes your bowel flora. So the amylopectin A, carbohydrate, is like feeding breadcrumbs to a bird or to a duck. They'll follow you, right? Well, when you consume the amylopectin A of grains, it essentially invites bacteria and fungi, like candida albicans and other fungi, to ascend. So bacteria and fungi are supposed to stay mostly in your colon, the large bowel. But when you consume the amylopectin A of wheat,
you essentially encourage ascending infection. That is, bacteria and fungi come up into the ileum, jejunum, duodenum, and even the stomach. That's called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and small intestinal fungal overgrowth, two conditions that I believe are an epidemic proportions now in the U.S. population, I believe over 100 million people have either SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, or both. And it shows up as common conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia. It can worsen autoimmune conditions. It can worsen Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis and celiac disease. It can show up as diabetes and weight gain. Okay, so the Changes in bowel flora encouraged by grain consumption, by wheat consumption, cause dysbiosis, changes in bowel flora that encourage weight gain. So this thing called wheat that we've all been told should dominate breakfast, lunch, and dinner and every snack is incredibly weight gain causing. So if you understand that, accept that, you now have access to an idea that gives you enormous power over weight as well as overall health. Eat no wheat. So that's why my wheat belly books, now my undoctored book, have done so well because people, it's not my charisma and charm, it's the fact that this process works, this program works. It starts with wheat elimination and grain elimination and we add other factors to correct common nutrient deficiencies that contribute to processes such as insulin resistance. But this process works, doing the exact opposite of all dietary guidelines.